Oberdorfer Helles. Welcome to another edition of Bands, Bikes and Bows Reviews. One today from Bavaria. And this is the Oberdorfer Helles from the Algar Brauhaus, which is based, funnily enough, in a place called Kempton. Not the Kempton where the race course is over here, of course. It's Kempton in Bavaria. Now that is a very southern part of Bavaria and it's at the foothills of the Alps. And I've actually reviewed quite a lot of the stuff from the Algauer Brow House, and it's been quite nice actually, I have to say. There's been some, some great ones. Most of the stuff I've tried has been brought over from Germany by my mate Norby. His missus, I think her family are from that region, and uh, whenever he's there, he stocks up on some beer and brings them over. And I have to say, I do like what they do. Now, I've never had anything by this lot before. Well, it is the same. Oberdorfer is a is a brand from the Algauer Brewery, and they actually do some other brands as well. But they're owned by Radeberger, and if you've heard of Radeberger, they are a, a sort of a, a conglomerate that own quite a few German breweries, but in turn, they are owned by a company called Dr. Ertica. Have you heard of Dr. Ertica? You may have eaten some of his pizzas. I wouldn't fucking touch them with a barge pole. Fuck knows what's gone into them, but Nah, not for me, thank you very much. Dr. Ertica, funny enough, was the inventor of baking powder, would you believe, back in the 1800s. And uh, yeah, that's his claim to fame, that's how he made his money. And he was also a food scientist, so he built his food empire from there and it's gone from strength to strength. And Dr. Ertica now are a huge concern, especially in Germany. They own a lot of food companies and beverage companies as well notably Radeberger, who own in turn quite a lot of uh, German breweries too. But that is reasonably boring if you're not into that kind of thing. But what I will say about these um, these beers from uh, Oberdorfer, the water that they use, it comes from the Alps. So you can bet your bottom dollar that's gonna be pure. It probably doesn't come purer than that. So that, in my opinion, is what is needed for a good beer absolutely pure soft spring water which we do have over here in the uk but nobody sees fit or very very few brewers see fit to put it into their their lagers they would just rather treat normal normal tap water and the results are subpar as you can imagine i've been saying this now for nearly two years and finally i looked on the uh what's the little welsh fellas uh YouTube channel, is it Real Ale Craft Beer or something like that? He's finally passing that message on now. I don't care how late he is or who he's copied it off, as long as they're doing it, then that's good. Because the more people that pass that message on, the better. Maybe these big brewers will start pulling their fucking fingers out and start brewing some decent lager because God knows in this country we are owed it because we have been fed a diet of absolute shit and i'm not joking it is shit now you might like your fosters you might like your carlins you might like your stellas that kind of thing but believe me if you did try german beer your mind would be changed i would not be lying if i said there is a huge number of people who've got in touch with me who said that their tastes have changed now that they've tried german beer or german lagers since watching my channel and that's percy and that's got to be a good thing because the more people that demand better beer, hopefully, I mean, I'm pissing into the wind here really because, you know, there are so many people that just accept what the macro brewers give them. And yeah, you're really being ripped off. There is so much better beer out there. And if you're a lager drinker, you really are being shortchanged in my opinion from what you're being charged there's just so much better out there in the world if you demand better hopefully 
you will get better. Hence the reason Bex isn't as popular as it used to be because believe me, Bex is shit. It really is bad beer. And relax, don't go into a rant. This is about the Oberdorfer Hellas, so let's stop fucking about. Let's get on to the next section. Okie dokie, this is a 500ml bottle, it is 5%. Um, I'm not sure whether that's the original uh, ABV on this because I have seen this at 4.8% as well. I'm assuming that it's been upped at some point, but they class it as a fog beer as well, so that would mean that the, the gravity was below a certain amount to stop the, um, stop the, the German government getting their greedy paws and charging them tax on the uh, on the beer but this is uh, this is a genuine bavarian brewery where well, algal is of course a bavarian brewery and they have got the protected status on the back of the label if you look on the front you can see the the blue checkered enzyme of the house of Wittelbach, which is a staple in bavaria you see that on lots of beers and other things as well, notably if you went to your football, Bayern Munich, they have that on their badge as well. It's synonymous with Bavaria. Um, there is not much of a brew sheet, aside from the fact that the spring water is, um, is it does come from the Alps, and the hop, or the one of the hops that's used in this is Tetnang hops. Now Tetnang hops are unique to the village of Tetnang, but they also grow them all over the world, basically. They even grow them in Switzerland, would you believe? And they're sort of related to the Fuggle hop and also related to the Sartz hop as well. They are considered a noble hop and the characteristics of them are exactly what you'd expect in a Hellas. They are quite herbal, quite spicy, and they've also got a floral element to them as well, which is perfect for uh, Hellas's of this type. Now they've used it as an aroma hop in this beer, but you can use it as a bittering hop as well, all depending on how soon you throw it into the boil. But there you go, that's all I can say on the brew sheet. Uh, if you wanna have a look at the cap, there is ye oldie cap, if I've got it around the right way, yes I have. And there it is, if focus wants to do what it's fucking paid for, there you go. So there is Oberdorfer Hellas in a nutshell. So without further ado, let's get it open and let's see what's going on. Rightio, it is fucking roasting out there. It is a Sunday and it is early evening and it is in up in the 80s and it is effing well roasting. My missus is sitting in the garden. There's a nice breeze in the garden, but I'm up here reviewing beer. The lengths I go to. Well, look at that. <laughs> fucking hell. What have you done there, you moron? Size of that head. What are we getting on the aroma? Let's have a look. Well, quite a lot of sulphur. Now, to be honest, I'm not expecting much from this because, as I say, this is a, I'm not, I wouldn't say it's a, um, a macro brewed beer, but it's a, it's a brand within a brewery. So you can take with that what you will. Now, I will say I did try the Starnberger Hellas yesterday, which is another Bavarian Hellas, and that was absolutely superb. The only thing that, slightly let it down it would have been a 10 out of 10 but the body on it just wasn't as big as some of the the best bavarian beers but it was still good and it's the first exceptional bavarian beer that i've had in a long time and i sort of did have a little bit of a high hope for this until i did the research and i saw you know the radeberger group owning algauer and don't get me wrong algauer do some good beers but i you know when you when you're owned by a, a big conglomerate like radeberger you, I don't think you can compete with the the absolute pinnacles of German or Bavarian Hellases, such as, in my opinion, the Augustina and the St. Georgenbräu, who, in my opinion, do the two best. There are other contenders, believe me, but they're the two that stand out for me. And this isn't really promising much at all. There's quite an element of sulphur in this. And to be honest, it really doesn't smell that great. Yeah, it's sulphur is the main thing that I'm getting from this. 
slight bitterness, slight herbal bitterness. But yeah, not much in there at all, to be honest. Oh, well, the proof is in the tasting, as I always say. So let's shut up, see what this is all about. Zum Wohl, as they say in Germany. Well, well, aromas sometimes can be deceiving because that is actually quite nice. Now, to be honest, the body on this, the first thing I notice is the body on this, if the Starnberger Hell had this body, then that would have been a 10 out of 10 beer. But this has got the body, believe me, and there's some quite nice toasted malt on this as well. Let me just have a, another dive in. Still getting that sulphur though, when I, when I put my nose up to it, there, there's quite a strong smell of, it's like a mix between like spicy, sulphurous notes. It sounds horrific, but it's, you do get this in some German beers. A lot of the time, it's not a good sign. However, this isn't too bad. There's some nice honey on the yeast as well. Now I did get that on the Steinberger as well. But I'm getting that too. Quite a quite a full body on it. The malt though, it is there, yes, there is a toasted malt flavour on there. The finish isn't that big though. But it's all in all, it's quite nice. It's not it's not the the absolute abysmal abortion that I thought it was gonna be when I just was getting sulfur from the uh, from the aroma. Now, if you look on there, you can see hardly any carbonation in that. It's very slow moving, and there isn't a lot there at all. That sort of translates to the mouthfeel. It's very smooth. But again, there's even more of that sulfur now. Really deceptive. Aroma isn't great. Flavour isn't bad. Let's dive in again. The herbal, the spicy notes, the lemon citrus, it's all very subtle. This is more about the, more about the malt and the finish and the full body on the beer. It is, as I say, it is quite nice. Certainly not unpleasant. I did have reservations, but thankfully that hasn't materialized in this. Nice smooth mouthfeel, very full bodied. And yeah, just a good, a good thirst quencher. Very refreshing in this kind of heat. And uh, yeah, really not a bad beer, all things considered. Again, I'm gonna mention the aroma. The aroma isn't very appetizing at all. Uh, aside from that, the flavors on here are quite nice. Look at that, that's quite a nice head on that too. If you look at that, <clears throat> let me get the, uh, let me get all my focus on the head. It's very tight, compact, foamy bubbles, quite uniform in size, which is a good sign in beer. Yeah, just a, a good quality Bavarian Hellas. Nothing special, not outstanding, but nice. Very nice indeed. So what is the verdict on Oberdorfer Hellas? Well, I did have slight reservations about this due to the aroma. The aroma was, I mean, don't get me wrong, it wasn't stellar type disgusting aroma that you get over here in the UK from the shit that's brewed in South Wales. But there was a lot of sulfur on that and I've had that in a few German beers that have gone down the sink, unfortunately. I did, rem I did recall that, I think it was about two years ago, I got a batch of beers from I think the House of Trembling Madness, quite obscure breweries from Bamberg and even uh, Tuka was one of them as well. They're not from Bamberg, they're from Nuremberg. But uh, there was a, quite a few in there and they all had that really strong 
sulfurous aroma that that's got and that translated to the flavor and it didn't taste that great. Thankfully, that isn't as bad, but it is there. You definitely get it on the aroma, but it's nice though. The flavor is, is solid. It's not outstanding. There's no real big bready, liquid bread type finish on there that lingers and lingers. The, the hop character on there isn't that big, I have to say. There's a little bit of spice on there and some lemon on there too, but it's subtle. And I think they probably just used tetanang on that and uh, probably used it as a bittering hop and an aroma hop as well. But the, the floral, the spicy notes and the herbal notes are all very subtle in there. But it does make for quite a refreshing beer. And as, as I say, in this heat, and it is still, I mean, it is what now? It is 20 to 7 in the evening and it's still up in the 80s now. And this is going down very nicely indeed. So if you see it and there's nothing else, then yeah, this isn't a bad one. I wouldn't go out of your way to buy it though. It's not outstanding. It's not certainly not as good as the Starnberg. And Starnberg is probably about as hard to get as this stuff. So if there's a choice between the Oberdorfer stuff and the Starnberger stuff, then go for that. So there you go. I'm going to give that, I'm just going to give it an 8 out of 10 because the aroma's slightly off putting and the flavours are okay but they're not outstanding considering this is a Bavarian Hellas and it does make a big thing about it as well on the on the label with the uh, with the blue and white check of the House of Wittelbach that's on there. So yeah I think 8 out of 10 is a fair mark. It's not bad though so if you're in the region or you do see this on your travels it's worth checking out but if there's other stuff you know the quality stuff Augustina then yeah go for the Augustina. So there you go and remember Beer is working class champagne. <laughs>